Guys, we're going to be, uh, today I'm going to be going over how to do a multicolor vinyl project using Rhino. Um, so I'm going to start by just creating a new Rhino file. Um, and so uh, we do in the, the, to cut it, we're going to do in inches. So we're going to use small objects inches. So small objects inches. Uh, because we're doing vinyl, we do not need a 3D design. We just need it 2D. So my recommendation is everyone does it using top. So we're going to use the top view. The other thing you're going to want to do is find a picture that you want to use to trace. Now there's different ways you can do vinyl graphics, by the way. You could free draw using the control point curve, the polyline curve. You can even apply text using the text object. So let me just at least show you that just as a reminder. If you want a polygon using straight lines, you can use the polyline tool and you can draw your shape using things like that. Uh, when you're done, you'll have uh, a, we call it a curve, even though it's a polyline. And that, the vinyl would cut that out and you'd have a little piece that you could peel off that looked like that shape. That's the polyline tool. Um, the control point curve tool, watch this, I, um, you can create curves. Notice how sometimes the curve doesn't actually touch the dots, which are the control points. Okay? Sometimes they don't touch them. For example, we could create a circle this way. We could create one dot here, one dot here, one down here, one over here. We get back there and it's sort of a, it's not exactly a perfect circle, but it's kind of a circle because we put dots around. It only took four dots to create that. If you want more fine-tuned curves, just make sure you put lots of dots. Or if you want nice gradual curves, you can then do them kind of like that. The, the only thing is you're just going to have to practice drawing these curves. The other thing, let's say you want to do type. You can also use the text object. However, when you create it, you absolutely must choose curves. You cannot use anything else or this will not work. So use curves. You can make it bold, italic. You can change the font. You click OK, and there you have it. So if you want to add type and you want to just use the text object, that's another way to do it. Now, to do vinyl, to make it easy to work, we should create a bounding box, a box that goes around everything to make it easier to peel the vinyl graphic off. So in order to do the box, we're going to create a rectangle. Now the rectangle tool is on the toolbar, over on the left towards the top. You can click it or in the command window up at the top, we can type out rectangle. Now as soon as we get enough letters to have it choose rectangle, we can just hit enter and then we can start drawing the rectangle. Now the first corner is going to be the bottom left corner. We're going to put that at zero, where the X and the Y meet at zero. Hit enter, and the length is going to be four, and we're going to create four. I'm going to create a four by four. Now for my digital tech class, all vinyl graphics must fit within a four by four. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to create some uh, little dots for reference points. And the reason why is we're going to create more than one layer of vinyl graphics. So in order to create multiple layers, we want to have little dots that we can put sort of towards the corners over here. See, I got one dot here. And I'm going to copy that. And so I copy it. I can copy it by clicking copy the uh, to the clipboard, or I can choose Control-C. I've already copied it. I'm going to paste it now. Control-V will paste it. I'll put the other dot over on the other corner. It's a nice idea to sort of line them up so they're, they're even. And so you want to start with a graphic like this. This is going to be the outer edge of our vinyl. And these will be the, the reference points so we can overlap one color on top of another. As you can see from the vinyl graphics I am showing you here on this video, that these have multiple colors. And in order to do this multiple color graphic, we had to actually design um, in, in the case of the Oregon logo, the ducks, we actually created two copies of the exact same rhino. And one we cut in yellow, the other we cut in green. We ended up with the same design, but we peeled out 
on the green, we peed out, peeled out all the letters, leaving the insides of the O's and the R. Now, on the yellow, we just peeled everything except for the text. So if we have these two reference points on here, it'll allow us to overlap the multiple colors. Okay, so let's say we want to design a logo, and we have different colors. Uh, you're going to want to pick, uh, find a logo. Now, you could try to free draw it using these tools, but I recommend we use the background bitmap. So in order to use background bitmap, we want to find a logo. Now, I'm going to try this HTML5 JPEG logo here. I like this particular one. And um, so I want to get a copy of that logo. So let me see if I can find another version of it. Yeah, this is a PNG, and it should work. So notice all the different colors we have here. We have uh, sort of an orange, a lighter orange, a white, a gray. Um, and then we can use either the white. Uh, we can either use the white or the gray, and we can peel out the other color. We also have black for the HTML. Okay. Now, Rhino only supports PNGs, JPEGs, uh, bitmaps, TIFFs, but it does not support a GIF. So if you find a GIF image, move along. It's not the image file format you're looking for. I'm going to save my HTML5 logo using right click save image as. I'm going to remember where I saved my logo. I'll put it under, well, let's put it in pictures. HTML5 logo dot PNG. Save. Once it is saved, I go to Rhino, and now I'm going to want to display it on my screen using background bitmap. We could do it two ways. The easiest way is just to type in command line background. I get three letters out, BAC, and it shows me background bitmap is what I want. So I have it. The first thing I want to do is place my image. So I click on place. I'm at pictures. So I start to type out HTML, and I see that HTML5 logo is there. I click open. And now I'm going to just click in here and draw my picture. And notice how I want to get it to fit within my box. Now, if everything fits within the box, you can just be done. But everything's moved off to the right, and I want to move it to the left. So while I have this window still open, I'm just going to click on Move. And now I'm going to click here in the center, and I'm just going to move it to the left and down a little bit. If I think that's good, I can be done. Now, look what I can do, guys. Um, this thing that normally it's set to grayscale, and we don't have our colors. I would like to have the colors. It's going to make it easier to see. Also, if your logo is too big and this does not fit, you can choose scale, and that's going to allow you to shrink your image. To do scale, you click it, scale, and I clicked right on one corner. I click out on the other, and I just drag it in, and then I can move it again. And I just click it when I think I have it moved right. And whenever I think it's good to go, I just, I'm done. Okay. Now, I am going to have a problem with these reference points in my logo if I want to have these, these colors going off. So I think I will move it just a little bit so that this circle does not intersect these white, uh, these white bars going out. And so I think this is going to be my logo. When I am done moving, aligning it, setting the color on my background bitmap, I can just hit the Enter key and now I'm done with that stage. Now, one other thing you should know when working with Rhino is um, that in Rhino, you can draw different colored lines using different layers. So since we're gonna do multicolor vinyl, we should use one color, uh, we should have different colored lines for each part of our logo. So to do that, we want to go to the Edit Layers icon, and we want to get Edit Layers open. Or, as I like to call it, it's the patriotic cheesecake. All right. Cheesecake. Yes, I'm getting all my students hungry now. Now, I'm going to use the default color for my box on the outside and the reference point here. In fact, I'm not even, I think I might not do these little rays coming out either. So I want to work with, so there's that yellow, and the different colors. 
So one of the things we can do is let's go ahead for default, I'm gonna make my HTML be in black. So I'm gonna continue using the default layer, which is black. So in order to do that, I got two options. I could use the text, uh, the text object tool and just try to get that there or I could hand draw it. And I'm gonna hand draw it and I'm just gonna use that background bitmap as a reference. So I'm gonna zoom in on it, on the HTML, and I'm gonna click on my polyline tool. And I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna click through my text. I'm gonna zoom in really tight. And by the way, everything is straight up and down, left or right. So what I'm gonna do on here is I'm actually gonna turn ortho on and make it easier to do. Okay, so now I'm going to just go through here and I'm just going to click through the H and then the T and the M and the L and then I'll spare you on the video of having to watch me click everything through. And so when I'm done, I click end. Now let's say I want to see how that H turned out. I can click it and I got it in yellow, right? You see that yellow there? Or I can hide my background bitmap. To hide it, you just type background bitmap when it's open, where it says visible equals yes, click it. And there's the H. See? Looks great. I'm going to leave it like it is. Although it looks like this H over here is a little shorter, but, you know, I think I'm okay with that. Now, while I'm doing this, I just got a question. I think it's a good answer. What if we have a couple of lines and they're not quite connected and we need to connect them? Or maybe I started part of a line and I didn't get it together. That's a very good question. So I'm going to demonstrate that real quick. So let's say I started to type the T and I went out here, I went out here, and then I hit enter and I was done with that. And so I'll hide the background bitmap again so you can see what this looks like. Okay, so I have part of a line here and I need to connect it to another line. Now, um, there's different reasons why you might need to do it. You might need to stop what you're doing on one or you might need to connect a curve line to a straight line. Whatever you want to do that. First of all, look down at the bottom of your screen. You have snap, ortho, planar, o snap, o snap, and record history. First of all, I'm taking ortho off. Ortho makes everything just straight up and down or straight left and right. And let's say I want to add a curved line to the T for some reason. And so I need to go to another tool, control point curve. But I want to make sure that these lines will connect. To do that, you use O snap, which is actually short for object snap. And then I check end. And now I click here, and now I can connect those lines, right? I hit enter. Now that might be what you're trying to do. Now in vinyl, you've got to make sure every line intersects. So what might happen too is your lines might be off a little bit and that can cause a problem. So let's say the real problem is I just need these two lines to connect and they're not connecting. And I want to keep this one. I don't want to move this line. So what we want to do here is we want to edit our points and hopefully do it before the bell rings. So to do edit points, you click the lines that you want to edit. Now I held down the shift key while I selected these two and you left click to get the edit points on. And as long as O snap and end are checked, you can then take one of those control points and then move it to the other. And did you see how it suddenly said end? Now those are selected. To get rid of the edit points, you just right click. And as you zoom in on there, they are connected. Not only that, but you can join the two lines if you want to be safe. So you select the two and you click on here, which is join. And as long as it says it was two curves or however many curves joined into one, either open or closed curve, then you'll know that those were touching because it wouldn't allow you to close them. Now, we're pretty much out of time on this part of the video, so on the second part, we'll go into working with the layers to doing multicolors.